Hi, I'm Tim Murphy with uh, ABB Optimization Services and today I'd like to uh, talk to you about a new QCS channel that um, we call QCS Transition Channel. So you're hopefully aware of the existing QCS channels that we have, uh, Control Utilization, Sensor Stability, and the VPA channel. Uh, those channels help monitor the current QCS uh, functionality for control, you know, util utilizing the control, the sensor stabilities for the online sensors, and then also the VPA where we're looking real, you know, real-to-real -real variability on the real turnups off the paper machine. So to extend those channels into something um, for what we call QCS transition, what we mean by that is the automatic grade changes, uh, shade changes, and sheet break recovery are all what I classify or we classify as transitions. So a transition is a uh, time period on the paper machine that's not what we call steady state. It's not you know while you're making a reel of paper, it's between reels when you're making a grade change. So it's critical to um, have the best transitions possible um, time-wise and to you know minimize the amount of broke that's made on the machine. So how do we do that with the transition channel is to first give the visualization and the data view to give you a visual representation of the data so you can look and compare transitions. In addition to the data, you can also look at what we call the scan or event view. Um, there we use the transition data itself, the raw data, and come up with the KPIs. And the KPIs are a way to quantify the grade change performance. So with the KPIs, and we can compare you know, one grade change to another, not in the raw data, but in the uh, KPIs. And then also track, we can use the track capabilities to, like we do with other channels, we can monitor a specific KPI, and then when that KPI exceeds a certain limit, we can use the track feature to um, trigger that, either the email or the, on the service port itself. So to do a quick little um, demo and to see what the uh, transition channel offers, let me just uh, navigate into what we call the data view. So in the data view, you'll see you have a list of the manual and the automatic grade changes, for example. Um, if we then select, say, one of the automatic grade changes, and then down on the lower part here, we also have the controllers. So the controllers allow us to look at both the low-level DCS controllers and the level, what we call level two controllers, which would be like your weight, moisture, the machine direction control. So for example, if we grab the uh, dry weight and we can see the dry weight measurement, this is before the transition. And then here we have the transition itself. And then the, the dash line shows you the target. And you can actually see the deviation from the, you know, the measurement from the target as we are settling into our new grade. So it's real, you know, at this point you're like, yeah, that's, that's data that we have. We can look at that on our um, historical um, trends or we can look at it on the DCS system. But, what the, uh, the additional offering with the QCS transition channel is, in addition to looking visually at this data, we can then say, well, compare this uh, transition, and I'm going to go ahead and select another one. Um, now I have two transitions. The uh, one transition is on December 10th. The other transition would be in December 12th. So these two transitions, both going up in weight, um, what I want to do now is in addition to looking at these, you know, the thing to think here though is that these are two different time periods. So on a traditional trend package or um, looking at it on a typical trend, these are two different times or days apart. So you, it's hard to compare these two trends. So in order to do that comparison, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the individual here and then go to an overlay. And with the overlay now, in addition to seeing them above each other, we can put them on top. So now we can really synchronize and see when the transition starts versus when it ends. You know, what does that data look like? You know, how much did we overshoot? Here we overshot by a certain uh, number of pounds. Here we overshot by a little less. Um, say now we want to look at, uh, in addition to the uh, weight, let's go ahead and look at well, the uh, stock flow level one or the DCS. PID for stock flow. So in addition to looking at the weight change for these two transitions, now we're looking at the stock. So you can see, for example, the one change on the stock flow where we actually went up to close to um, 2,900 uh, GPM. 
notice that, that it, where the transition went to versus where we end up, those are two different places. So part of the feed forward feedback that occurs during the transition, there could be a model modeling update. So there, we, right now we've identified a potential area for improvement for the stock flow modeling, um, just based on these two transitions that we're looking at. So in addition to understanding the, the raw data and how we can look at the raw data and we can compare one transition to another, now what I'd like to do is navigate into the, um, what we call, let's see, we'll go into the scan event view. And in the scan event view, this is where we take the transitions and we're going to look at the KPI. So here we've moved from the data itself into the actual KPI. So I want to look at a, uh, let's see, not the quarterly, let's look at the monthly. So we can look at one month of transitions. Um, in that one month of transitions in January of 2015, we have nine transitions that have potential issues that we want to look at. Um, if we look at those transitions, there's KPI breakdowns. We look at overall transitions um, issues. We look at the time. We look at uh, whether a sheet break occurred during the transition. We can also look at uh, weight control. Uh, was the weight change ramp rate fast as what we th thought it should be? Was there an excessive deviation in the weight uh, measurement from target? And at the same time, moisture is a big one on grade changes. Moisture, if we have an excessive moisture deviation during the grade change, this can cause you know, potential issues with sheet break or runnability. Um, but let's now like drive, we're gonna drive into one of these into a little more detail. So on the excessive transition time, we can then click here and we see now the list of transitions that each had a KPI. And as um, refresh you on the, the KPI, remember a, a 100 on a KPI means that that's a, a pretty major issue versus a KPI closer to zero or at zero means we don't have an issue we really need to investigate. So let's pick one of the automatic grade changes here. And if we look at the automatic grade change, we'll see that that automatic grade change, we look at the data, we can look at the limiting level two control. This is the size moisture. So the size moisture is what's prevented this uh, grade change time from reaching target as quickly as we uh, wanted it to. So in addition to the size moisture, we can then come over and let's take a look at what other, um, what other areas do we want to look at. And you notice that the size moisture has a pretty dramatic increase, okay? And then there's a flat area where the measurement looks like it stopped updating. So, and if we look at, in addition to the size moisture, this is an indication of the sheet break. So this is a pretty obvious case. You know, obviously the transition time is going to be affected by a sheet break, but this is, uh, you know, quickly we've drilled into the transition time and found a transition that was not performing as well as possible. This one was related to a, a sheet break that occurred. We can also then take a quick look at, say, the um, steam pressure. So in addition to the moisture, let's take a look at the steam. So here we can look at the steam pressure where we, you can see where we added steam. Some steam was taken off during the sheet break. So again, this is, uh, gives you the visualization of the grade change. It gives you a really quick way to identify what are the limiting factors of a transition. Um, from here, it's really identifying these potential areas of improvement. We're gonna then move into how do we make the improvement? So, you know, the, Again, to summarize, what are we doing with the, this QCS transition channel is the, the main objective initially is really to help with the visualization, giving you the ability to compare one grade change to another, um, looking at what are the um, limiting factors of the grade change, and then taking that information and then coming up with an implementation plan that allows you to make improvements maybe in the grade change modeling. And from the modeling improvements then you know, this is ongoing, it will continue to collect new grade changes, and then we can go back and compare KPIs from existing uh, grade changes to new grade changes. So with this channel, the value added is really making improvements to the grade change package, getting that value from, you know, financial improvements and reduced broke, reduced sheet breaks during grade change, and then having the ability to monitor the grade changes on a continuous basis moving forward to maintain that um, 
benefit and improvement that's made. So hopefully that gives you a, a quick idea of what the QCS uh, transition channel does and its capabilities and thanks for your time.